right, this is chapter 4.2, adding, subtracting, and multiplying polynomials. So the essential question for the chapter is, how can you cube a binomial? What you will learn in this chapter section is how to add and subtract polynomials, how to multiply polynomials, and use what's called Pascal's triangle to expand binomials. Pascal was a mathematician, and he developed the found or identified a pattern in this, and it's called his triangle. So adding and subtracting polynomials. Recall that the set of integers is closed under addition and subtraction because every sum or difference results in an integer. So when a set of numbers is closed, it just means that when you when you do an operation, when you perform an operation on a set of numbers, the result is also in that set. So if you add an integer to another integer, you get an integer. So therefore, the set of integers is closed under addition. And it's also closed under subtraction. OK, so to add or subtract polynomials, you add or subtract the coefficients of like terms. Because adding or subtracting polynomials results in a polynomial, the set of polynomials close under addition and subtraction. OK, so let's take a look. Okay, example one, adding polynomials vertically and horizontally. So A, it's asking us to add 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 7. That is a polynomial degree 3. It's in standard form, 3, 2, 1, 0 degrees, or powers. So it's the degree of the leading coefficient. So there's a little review. Leading coefficient of 3, and the degree is also 3. All right, so we're going to add that to another one that is x cubed minus 10x squared plus 8, 3, 2, 0 in this case. And we're going to do it in a vertical format. So A is vertical. And what we're going to do is take the first one, 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 7. And we're going to add, and I like putting parentheses around the whole thing so I remember that the addition isn't part of the first term only. And I will write the next one in red. So it's going to be x cubed minus 10x squared. Now notice I go from squared to a constant. There is no x to the first. So I'm going to say plus 0x, because there's nothing there, plus 8, just to keep everything lined up. Okay, so I'm, multi I'm adding three this to this where my terms are lined up, my like terms. You can only add and subtract like terms. And you only add and subtract the coefficients. So the x cubed doesn't change. So the big um, misconception at the beginning of this is, well, 3x cubed plus x cubed, well, that's 3 plus 1, that's 4. That's correct. But x cubed plus x cubed does not x to the sixth. We do not add our exponents. The exponents stay the same. So now I have 2 plus a negative 10. Well, that's negative 8. And the x squared stays the same. Negative x plus 0x is still negative x. And then negative 7 plus 8 is 1. So these two polynomials added up give us a new polynomial with these values. So that's how you do a vertical um, addition. OK, now let's do B. This one we're going to do in a horizontal format. I don't like doing them horizontally. I definitely prefer the vertical. I never do them horizontally. But I will for this video because it says to. So it says to add 9y cubed plus 3 y squared minus 2y plus 1. So that's 3, 2, 1, 0. It's in standard form. It is a cubic with a leading coefficient of 9. So I'm going to put that in parentheses. That is my first term. And I'm going to add. So I'm going to put a plus sign here and a new parentheses for the second term. And this is negative 5y squared plus y minus 4. And that is going to equal, 
And what you do is you look at each piece at a time. Here's a 9y cubed. There are no cubes over here. That is going to equal 9y cubed. And then I'm going to go to the next, and I'm going to say plus 3y squared. And then I look over here. There's a squared, y squared, so it's going to be minus 5y squared. So I'm just listing them in order. Then this one, minus 2y. And then here is a plus y. And then finally, my constant of plus 1 and my constant of minus 4. And that is going to equal, since there's only one 9y cubed, I'm not adding anything to it. And that just stays the same. And now I have these two terms that are both squares. So it's plus 3y minus 5y is minus 2y. And they're squared. The, the power always stays the same. And then we then have, let me change colors. We then have these two here which is a negative 2y plus y, or 1y plus 1y, so that's going to be minus 1y, or just simply minus y. And then finally, our last terms are constants, and it's 1 plus a negative 4, which is negative 3. So my answer to this is 9y cubed minus 2y squared minus y minus 3. So that's how you do it horizontally. I just simply prefer to do it vertically and line things up, and when there is no term that goes with the other, I put in what I call a spacer, a zero. Okay, so that's how you do adding polynomials vertically and horizontally. So now you should be able to do three through three, four, and six on your exercise. Okay, example two is subtracting. Let me highlight that. You really need to be careful when you're subtracting polynomials. Uh, there's a key word, and it's the word from. So I'm going to highlight these so you don't make the mistake. It's easily done. I've done it. So here's A. Subtract this from this. So we're taking this minus that. When you say subtract something from, if I said subtract 3 from 5, that means 5 minus 3. Subtracting 3 from 5, 5 minus 3. OK? So you want to keep track that the word from tells us to do the second part first. So in doing this in vertical format, I will write the last one first. 8x cubed minus 3x squared minus 2x plus 9. And I'm going to subtract this 2x cubed plus 6x squared minus x plus 1. OK? So just be careful with the word from. So 8 minus 2 is 6x cubed. Negative 3 minus 6 is negative 9x squared. Negative 2 minus a negative means plus. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1x, or just negative x, and 9 minus 1 is 8. So I get 6x cubed minus 9x squared minus x plus 8. OK, so now let's do part B. Part B. Part B is subtract this from this. So I'm going to write 2z squared plus 3 z, and I'm going to subtract 3z squared plus z minus 4. OK, and that's going to, I'm going to rewrite all of this. So the first term doesn't change. This is going to be 2z squared plus 3z. And one way we can also do this, I didn't do it here, but you can is just the minus sign here changes all the signs within. So think of it as negative 1 distributed. Negative 1 times a positive 3z squared is minus 3z squared. And then negative 1 times a z, positive z, is minus z. And this negative 1 distributed to a minus 4 minus a negative 4 is plus 4. OK, so we rewrite it as addition and then 
or actually we changed all the signs in the parentheses of the second is what we did. So then we just take 2z squared minus 3z squared is negative z squared. 3z minus z is 2z. And then I have 0 plus 4, so that just becomes plus 4. So I get negative z squared plus 2z plus 4. Again, I definitely prefer the vertical over the horizontal format. Okay, example three is multiplying polynomials. Multiplying, multiplying. Multiplying polynomials vertically and horizontally. So here is a vertical negative x squared plus two x plus four times x minus three in vertical form. X minus three goes like so. Okay, so we're multiplying. So we take the minus three first, negative three times a positive four is negative 12. Negative three times a positive two X is a negative six X. Negative times a negative is positive. Three times X squared is three X squared. That's this first polynomial multiplied by negative three. Now we're gonna multiply everything through by X. X times 4 is 4X. Line it up with your linear term here. It's a positive 4X. X times 2X is 2X squared. And it's positive. And then finally, X times a negative X squared is a negative X cubed. Um, I want to point out, before I continue any further, where this x times 2x became 2x squared. So I'm talking about multiplying 2x times x and getting 2x squared. The reminder is over here. Product of powers property says that if a base to a power of m times another a being the base to the power of n, then it equals a to the m plus n. So what you do, this is to the 1, and this is to the 1. So that'd be 2x to the x, 2x times x to the 1 plus 1, which is 2. OK? Just renewing the, or reviewing the reminder, or reminding, or reviewing, or reviewing the reminder, or reminding the review of a product of powers property. <laughs> OK, so now let's move on to b. B is in horizontal form. So I'll click here, and B is horizontal. And we're going to multiply these two. So to do it horizontally, you take the first term, y plus 5. And you multiply it by the second term, 3y squared minus 2y plus 2. And then we're going to distribute. So it's going to be y plus 5 times the first term. So it's y plus 5 times 3y squared. OK. And then this is minus, so I'm going to put a minus here. And then it's y plus 5 times 2y. So I've already done y plus 5 times this, and that gave me this. Now I'm doing y plus 5 times a 2y, and it's minus. So it's going to be y plus 5 times 2y. The minus is right here, by the way. And the next term is plus. So that's going to be plus. And we put the y plus 5 times 2, which would be y plus 5 times 2. So it's just the distributive property. This term paired with all three of the other terms, keeping in mind what sign is in front. And now we're going to distribute this here and here. So 3y squared times y is 3y cubed. 3y squared times 5 is 15y squared. 3 times 5 and then the y squared. OK, so now we're going to take 2y times y, and it's negative 2y squared. And a 2y times a negative 5 
is going to be negative 10y. And then finally, plus, so what I did here was I distributed this to here. Now we're going to take 2 times y and 2 times 5. So that's going to be 2 times y is 2y, and 2 times 5 is 10. Okay, so we're almost done. 3y is all by itself, or the y cubed, I mean. So it's going to be 3y cubed. Then we have y squared, and it's 15 minus 2, which is 13y squared. And then we take the like terms here, negative 10y plus 2y is minus 8y. And then finally, 10 is all by itself, so it's plus 10. Okay, so there it is, 3y cubed plus 13y squared minus 8y plus 10. That is doing vertical and horizontal multiplication of polynomials. Now you should be able to do number 17, 18, and 20. Okay, here's example four, multiplying three, count on three binomials. So I'm going to color code these. x minus 1, x plus 4, and x plus 5. So we're going to multiply these in the horizontal format. So we're just going to rewrite this first. x minus 1 times x plus 4 times x plus 5. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the first two first. So foil x times x, x squared. Outer plus 4x. Inner minus x. And then a negative 1 times a positive 4 is minus 4. And that is going to get multiplied by x plus 5. So let me put that in parentheses, parentheses. There we go. So this times this now. So I've already done the two binomials and got a polynomial. And notice the 4x minus x. That can be combined here. 4x minus x is 3x. So I'm going to rewrite that as x squared plus 3x minus 4. I'm just simplifying this a little bit and then times x plus 5. OK, the next thing is we need to distribute the x and the 5 to everything. So this is going to become x squared plus 3x minus 4. And I'm going to multiply that all by x. And then I look at this sign right here, and it's positive. So I put plus, rewrite this again, x squared plus 3x minus 4. And that's going to get multiplied by 5. So it's all of this times x plus all of this times 5. That's the distributive property. And the next thing I'm going to do is distribute. So it's going to be x times x squared, which is x cubed. x times 3x, which is a positive 3x squared. And then an x times a negative 4 is negative 4x. And then I'm going to add that to 5 times x squared, which is 5x squared, 5 times 3x, which is 15x, and 5 times a negative 4 is negative 20. So now I just have to combine like terms and we're done. So x cubed here, nothing over here. That's going to start with x cubed. Then I have a 3x squared and I have a 5x squared. Those add up to 8x squared. Okay, then I have minus 4x plus 15x, so that's going to be 11x. And then finally, no constant here, but a minus 20 over here will be minus 20. So I end up with x cubed plus 8x squared plus 11x minus 20. So that is multiplying three binomials in the horizontal format. Now you should be able to do 27, 28, and 30 from the exercises. OK, now we're on to a core concept, special product patterns, sum and difference. So if we have a plus b times a minus b, we get a squared minus b squared. So they're not showing how this happened or what, where it came from. But if we have a plus b, times a minus b, and we FOIL 
we get a times a, which is a squared. We get a times negative b, which is negative a b. And then we enter is b times a, which is a positive a b. And then finally, b times negative b is negative b squared. So as you can see, the middle term is negative ab plus ab, and they cancel, leaving us with a squared minus b squared. Okay, so this is called the difference of squares, and we get a plus b times a minus b, or vice versa. So here's an example. x plus 3 times x minus 3 is the first term squared minus, the sign is the 2 combined, positive times a negative is negative, minus, it's always minus, and 3 squared is 9. So squaring a binomial, a plus b squared, will give you a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, because if this is plus right here, this will become plus, and that would give us a middle term of 2ab. All right, so let me just squeeze that in there. That's the only change. a plus b times a plus b is 2ab minus b squared, and that is right here. And in general, there's a common error. a plus or minus b squared does not equal a squared plus or minus b squared. So you're missing the middle term if you think that is going to happen. So if I have a minus b squared, it's going to be a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. And here are two examples. I'll have you review those on your own. And then the cube of a binomial is going to be a plus b cubed, which gives us the first term cubed plus three times a squared b plus three times a b squared plus b cubed. And a minus b to the third power is a to the third minus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared minus b cubed. So what happened here? I have a positive, therefore everything is positive. Here I have a negative. So it's negative here, then positive, then negative. So just think of the signs as going plus, minus, plus, minus. They alternate. Just ways to remember. Okay. And that is cubing binomials. And here is the example. <clears throat> this I will take a look at. Z plus 3 cubed is going to equal Z cubed plus this number times 3. So it's 3 a squared b. Well, a squared is z squared, and b is 3. So think of this as a, and think of this as b. So it's going to be a cubed, z cubed, and then plus 3 a squared b. Well, a squared is z squared, and b squared is 9. So it's 3 z or z cubed plus 9z squared plus 27z where does that come from it's 3 times a b squared okay so it, let me go back to this one so if this term is 3 and a is z squared and b is 3 then you get this 3 times 3 which equals 9 and then your z squared is right there Okay, so let me just talk through all of these and show you what, why it happens. Next one, we're going to get 3ab squared. That's this term right here. So that would become 3. A is z in this case. B is 3 in this case squared. So 3 squared is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. And then the z follows, and that's where this 27z comes from. And then finally, b cubed, which is 3 times 3 times 3, which becomes 27. Okay, so that's where they all come from. If you do not memorize these, you will just be forced to have to do what we did right here when we have the same value for all three. That's what cubing something is, multiplying the same thing by itself three times. Okay, example five is proving a polynomial identity. Prove that the polynomial identity for the cubic of the binomial representing a sum. So we, they want us to prove this is true, okay? All proofs are is just showing all the steps as to where things came from. 
Okay, I don't know what's going on with my pens. I clicked on a color and stays the color. So anyway, here we go. A plus B cubed equals. Now, my goal is to get this. I'm not going to write it here. I have to prove it. So what does A plus B cubed mean? It means A plus B times itself three times. Okay. Step one, a plus b cubed is a plus b times a plus b times a plus b. The next thing I'm going to do is multiply the first two, and I'm going to distribute a times a, a squared. a times b is a plus b, or a b. Okay, this is all positive, so I'm just going to put plus signs. Okay, so that's the first, that's the last outer. The inner is A times B again, which is AB. And then the last is B times B, which is B squared. And now I'm going to multiply that by A plus B. Well, what does that mean? We just did it on the last example. It means A squared plus A. And right here, I'm going to combine. These are like terms. 2AB plus B squared. So that's this simplified, and I'm going to multiply it by A. So I'm going to do this, and it's all positive, so I'm going to put a plus sign here. And then I'm going to repeat this A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. And let me stop right there. Notice what we just did. A plus B times A plus B is A squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Well, that was right here. All right, so there's that proven. And now we're multiplying, we multiplied this by a, and now we have to multiply it again by b. This is the distributive property, okay? And now I'm just gonna multiply through. a times a squared is a cubed. A times 2AB is 2, the plus sign here, plus 2 times A is 2A squared B. And then multiplying this, I get plus AB squared. Plus, and then I multiply the B throughout. This is going to give me A squared B Multiplying B times 2AB is going to be plus 2AB squared. And then finally, B squared times B is B cubed. All righty. So now I want to look for like terms. I have an A squared B. I have an A squared B. So right here is a squared b, and this is a squared b. I have an a cubed, I have a b cubed. They're not like terms. So I'm going to rewrite everything. a cubed is by itself, so that stays the same. 2a squared b plus a squared b is 3a squared b. And then I have an ab squared. I have a 2ab squared. That is going to give me 3ab squared. And then finally, this B cubes at the end with no pairs, with no like terms. Okay, so now if you look, I have A cubed, A cubed, 3A squared B, 3A squared B, 3AB squared, 3AB squared, and B cubed, B cubed. We just showed that multiplying, distributing multiple times repeatedly gives us this. So we proved that A plus B cubed does in fact equal there should be equal signs here. So A plus B cubed, if we brought this down, equals this side. And that's what we were trying to prove. Okay. Part B. Use the cube of a binomial in part A right here to calculate 11 cubed. Well, the first thing I want to do is represent 11 cubed as a binomial. Okay, actually I don't want the cubed inside. Let me just put 11 in parentheses cubed. Okay, to make 11 a binomial, I can say, well, 11 is 10 plus one. 
and 10 plus 1 cubed would be the same as 11 cubed. Okay, so then I take that 10 plus 1 cubed, and that's going to equal 10 plus 1 times 10 plus 1 times 10 plus 1. Oops. Okay, so that's what that means. Um, but instead of writing this all out and doing this, we just proved it. So I'm not going to write that, but that's what it means repeated. Now I'm going to take the rule and I'm just going to apply it. So the rule is right here. We're taking this rule right here and applying it. So in this case, I have A equals 10 and B equals 10. One, right? A, B, A plus B cubed. So that's going to equal A cubed. Well, A cubed is 10 cubed. Then it's going to be plus. I'm just following this, or we can look up here. And it's going to be 3 times A squared B. 3 times A, which is 10, squared times B, which is 1, plus, now we're here. And it's 3AB squared, so 3 times A times B squared, and then finally plus B cubed, plus, and my B is 1, 1 cubed. Okay, so 10 plus 1 cubed equals 10 cubed is 1,000, plus 10 squared is 100 times 3 is 300 plus 10 times 1, well, 1 squared is 1, 10 times 1 is 10, 10 times 3 is 30, and then finally 1 cubed is 1. So 10 plus 1 cubed equals 1,331. Okay, and that's what 11 cubed is. So if I go to my calculator, and go to my home screen and clear it and put 11 to the third power, I get 1,331. Okay, so that is using the cube of binomials of part A to calculate 11 cubed. All right, so from that proof and that calculation, you should now be able to do problem 33 on your assignment. Okay, so now it says using special products patterns, find each product. So the first one is 4n plus 5 and 4n minus 5. Well, this is a plus b times a minus b. So I have brought that in. a plus b times a minus b is going to equal a squared minus b squared. So I'm using the special product pattern rather than doing all the distribution. I'm using the pattern. So in this case, I'm just going to write a equals 4n. Here's my a plus b and b equals 5. And here's my a, 4n, minus b, 5. So a is 4n, b is 5. a, b, a, b. Get it? OK, so that is going to equal a squared, which is 4n squared minus b squared. Well, don't forget to distribute. 4 squared is 16. n times n is n squared, or n squared minus 25. Okay, so if you know the rule, it's just quick and easy. Difference of squares is going to give you a squared minus b squared, which is a plus b, a minus b. Okay. This one is a difference of squares. a minus b quantity squared. So I'm going to Bring this in, we change colors. So A, in this case, I'll write it up here. Now I'll write it right here. A equals 9Y. And B equals 2. So I have A minus B squared is going to equal A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. So A is 9, so it's A squared. So it's going to be 9Y 
squared minus 2 times a, which is 9y, times b, which is 2, plus b, which is 2, squared. So don't forget to distribute. And 9 squared is 81. y squared is y squared minus 2 times 9 is 18y times 2 is 36y and then plus 2 squared, which is 4. So I get 81y squared minus 36y plus 4 very quickly if I know the rule. And then the last one, let me switch here. Okay, the last one is a sum of squares cubed. Okay, a, B, a plus B squared. Okay, don't let the A, B confuse you in this one. So in this case, A is right here. This is A. So I'm going to write A equals A, B in our case, and B is 4. So I have A, B replacing A, because that's in the first position before the plus sign, and B is 4. So that is going to be a cubed, which is a times b to the third power, plus 3 a squared, and my a is ab squared, times b, which is 4, plus 3ab squared, so it's 3, and it's a, which is ab, don't get confused here, and so that's 3ab. This ab right here is just the a, and my b is 4. That's 4 squared. And then finally, plus b, which is 4 cubed. All right. So I haven't mentioned it here. I did say here you distribute, but it's the rules right here. If you don't remember, power of product property. a times b to the power of m is a to the m times b to the m, which is what I'm showing you here. 9 squared y squared gave me 81 y squared. I'm going to do the same thing here. It's a b cubed, and that's going to give me a cubed b cubed plus 3. And this gets distributed here and here. So it's going to be 3a squared b squared. And that's going to be times 4. So I'm going to have to do some more simplifying there. I could do it now and say 12, but I'll get back to that. And here I'm going to do the 3 a, B, I'm just doing exponents first because that's what the order of operation says to do. And four cubed is four times four, which is 16 times four is 64. All right, so now I just need to clean this up. A cubed, B cubed is done. Now I just need to multiply this four and this three and I get 12 A squared, B squared. And then multiply the 16 times 3. 16 and 16 is 32 plus 16, or 16 times 3 is 48. AB plus 64. So this is AB plus 4 cubed. So I got A cubed, B cubed, plus 12A squared, B squared, plus 48AB plus 64. Okay? So that's how you substitute in using the rules rather than having to write that out and distribute multiple times. So now you should be able to do problems 35, 36, and 38. But when you do, go back to the core concepts page here and use the right formulas. Okay, the next thing we're gonna discuss is Pascal's triangle. So it says to consider the expansion of the binomial a plus b to the power of n for whole number values of n. In other words, n is 1, n is 2, n is 3. Whole numbers, 1 to infinity, no decimals or fractions. When you arrange the coefficients of the variables in the expansion of a plus b to the n, you will see a special pattern called Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle is named after a French mathematician and his name was Blaise Pascal, and he lived from 1623 to 1662, died at the age of 39. Core concept, Pascal's triangle. In Pascal's triangle, the first and last numbers in each row are one. Okay, so let me explain as I go here. So in the first 
line, there is only one one. So that's the first and the last number. And it just happens to be one. The first number is a one. The last number is a one. The first number is a one. The last number is a one. In this row, the first number is a one. The last number is a one. That is what they mean. It always has starts and ends in one. Okay, right there. Every number other than one is the sum of the closest two numbers in the row directly above it. Okay, so let me explain what that means. So you have all these ones going down the outside. And in order to create a Pascal's triangle, then the number in the middle is the sum of the two above on each side. So one plus one is two. Let me erase this circle. So basically what you're doing in a Pascal triangle is putting plus signs here and here. One plus two, three. Two plus one, three. One isn't being added, so the outside line comes down. One, the sum of these two, the sum of these two, finish with one. Start with one, add one plus three, and get four. Add three plus three, get six. Add three plus one, and get four. End the line with a one. Start the next row with a one. One plus four, five. Four plus six, ten. Six plus four, ten. Four plus one, five end the row with a one. And that keeps going and going and going. So I'm going to do one more row here to explain this. So I come out over here. I start the row with a one. One plus five, six. Five plus 10, 15. 10 plus 10, 20. 10 plus five, 15. Five plus one, six. End the row with a one. So we can keep doing this to infinity. And that is going to determine the binomial expansion of a quantity a plus b to a certain power. So each row represents the power of the row. Okay, so then you take a squared, a b, b squared, a cubed, a squared, b, a b squared, b cubed, a to the fourth, and then it goes a cubed, b to the first, which adds up to four, then two plus two, they're, they're equal. And then one plus three is four, and there's a four here. This is a to the fifth, which would be four plus one, three plus two, two plus three, one plus four, and then getting out to five again. So it can be a little confusing, but that's all they're doing. It's a pattern. And once you understand the pattern, it just keeps repeating. Okay, so that is Pascal's. Okay, example seven is using Pascal's triangle to expand binomials. So it says to use Pascal's triangle to expand a, x minus two to the fifth. So we're going to take x minus two to the fifth power. And before I do that, I'm gonna go back to the Pascal's triangle fifth row. And it is right here, one, five, 10, 10, five, one. That is Pascal's triangle, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. So I'm going to write that, okay? So I'm going to put 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Those are, that's the row from Pascal's triangle in row 5. A equals x, and B equals negative 2, if you're thinking of this as A plus B. It's x plus a negative 2 to the power of 5. Okay, so then we're going to begin. Here's our leading coefficient, 1. And you take the a to the power of what we're doing, which is 5, fifth power. So it's 1x to the fifth plus, and then our leading coefficient is going to be 5. And it's going to be a, which is x to the 4 times b to the 1. So our powers are going to add up to 5 plus leading coefficient of 10 times x, which is a, to the third b squared, because 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 10, our next leading coefficient, x squared. So what's happening here is you have x to the fifth, x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, x, and then a constant. It just de keeps decreasing. 
and your B keeps increasing. So B was zero here, B is one here, right here, B is two here, B is three here. Plus, and then five is my leading coefficient. X now decreases by one, and my negative two increases by one. So it's one and four, still adding up to five, plus one, and it's X to the zero, B to the fifth. Okay, so that is the Pascal's triangle setup. And so I'm going to simplify now. So this is going to come out to be 1x to the fifth plus, actually it's minus because there's going to be a negative 2 here. So I multiply my terms and do the powers first. Negative 2 to the first power is negative 2 times 5 is negative 10x to the fourth. Minus, because 10 times negative 2 is going to be negative. And actually that's plus because my powers, it's going to alternate. Negative 2 squared. So always do your power first. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. 4 times 10 is 40x cubed. Okay? Negative 2 to the third power is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, which is negative 8 times 10, which is negative 80x squared. And then negative 2 to the fourth power is 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. 16 times 5 is 80. So that's going to be a positive 80x. And then finally, negative 2 to the fifth is 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16 times 2 is 32. And it's negative 32. Okay. So it's x to the fifth minus 10x to the fourth plus 40x cubed minus 80x squared plus 80x minus 32. That is what x minus 2 to the fifth power expanded out would be using the Pascal's triangle. Okay, so now part b, we're going to do 3y plus 1 cubed. So b is going to be 3y plus 1 to the third power. So if I go back to Pascal's triangle and get to the third row, it is one, three, three, one. Okay, so I'm just gonna write that here, one comma, three comma, three comma, one. So three y plus one cubed is going to equal, and then I'm over here, I'm just gonna write a is three y and b is one. So I'm going to start with my leading coefficient of 1 times a, 3y, to the third power, times b to the 0. I'm just going to show it this time. I didn't show it up here because 3 plus 0 is 3. And now every power is going to increase on the y and or decrease on the y and increase on the 1. So then you say plus. Now it's going to be 3 for my leading coefficient from here from the Pascal's triangle, times a squared, okay, times b to the 1, because 2 plus 1 is 3, plus leading coefficient of 3, 3y. Now this is going to decrease to 1 times 1 squared plus, and then my leading coefficient is 1 times 3y to the 0 times 1 to the 3. Okay, so it goes 3, 2, 1, 0 for the y, and 0, 1, 2, 3 for the 1. So the first term decreases in power by 1 each time. The second term increases in power by 1 each time and you use the leading coefficients from the Pascal's triangle. So this is going to equal one times three y cubed times one to the zero. One to the zero is one. One times one is one. One times three y cubed is going to be, don't forget to distribute, you're going to get nine y cubed. Plus, this one doesn't do anything. One to the one power is one. One times three is three. Don't forget to square. 
And I was wrong over here, by the way. It's not nine. Three cubed is 27. Nine, three times three is nine times three is 27. Y to the cubed was right. So 27 Y cubed. And now I'm going to do three squared, which is nine times three, which is 27 again, and Y squared plus. So now I have one squared, which is just one, three Y to the one, which is just three Y. So one times three Y is three Y, three Y times three is nine Y. Okay, and then this one here, one, three Y to the zero is just simply one and one cubed is one. So it's one times one times one, which is one. So I get 27 Y cubed plus 27 Y squared plus nine Y plus one when I expand three Y plus one cubed using Pascal's triangle. Okay, so hopefully you understood that and now you're able to do 43, 44 and 46 in your assignment. Okay, this brings us to the end of chapter 4.2. If you haven't already, please do these exercises and have a great day.